Hi guys. So let's start today with grabbing your binders from the bookshelf. Cross off Monday. You should be on a new page. We didn't do a warm up on Monday, but we are going to do one today. So let's go grab your binders. If you need to pause the video to do that, go pause the video and open to your warm ups. So we are going to decide which fraction is bigger by using multiplication. Now, when we did the quiz last week, I showed some of you this method and I didn't show all of you. So now I wanna show everyone this method of how we can figure out which fraction is bigger without having to draw a number line and cut it into the appropriate amount of pieces, which would have been their denominator or the bottom number, and then coloring in the top number. We're gonna try using our multiplication charts, if we're not sure, um, to figure out what is actually bigger. So in your Tuesday box, I want you to write down our two questions. Leave a little space, because we do have to show our work, but write down your two questions. <clears throat> okay, now let's start with number one, because I want to show you all of number one, and then I want you to pause the video and try number two on your own. So with number one, what I want you to do is we're gonna loop together numbers. This is gonna be called cross multiplication. So I want you to draw a little loop around two and four. And in between your loop, I want you to draw a multiplication dot. Good. Now we'll actually multiply them because if they're in the loop, they get multiplied. So I need to figure out two times four. Now, if we're not sure, you can use your multiplication charts, but I know this one, I know that's eight. So above our loop, so above a two, I want you to write eight. Because that's our answer to our multiplication problem. Now let's loop together the other numbers, three and five. Our multiplication dot is still in between so we still have to multiply what's in the loop. So three times five, I know that is 15. So I'm gonna write my answer above three. Now let's think about this. Let's see, eight compared to 15. What do you think? Where, which alligator, our alligator's gonna eat one of these numbers, and I definitely think it's gonna be 15. So above your 15, or excuse me, above our problem, we should show our alligator eats the number 15. Well, the original problem wasn't comparing 15 and eight, it was comparing the fractions three-fourths and two-fifths. So when I write my answer, and we're gonna do that below the problem, I need to write it using those fractions. So let's rewrite the problem, three-fourths, and two-fifths. Well, 15 is hovering above the fraction three-fourths, and it's being eaten by the alligator. That means our alligator's gonna continue to eat three-fourths. Or if it's easier to think about, just bring your alligator down, and that's our answer. Again, pause the video if you need to, if this went too fast. But I want you guys to try to do number two. Now we're gonna loop together the numbers first and then you can pause the video. So let's loop diagonally two and six. You will need to multiply those numbers together then multiply one and three. Okay, pause the video now, do the multiplication, and figure out which fraction is bigger. Okay, let's see how this went. So two times six, you should have come up with 12. And that gets written above the two, our other part of the problem is one times three. Well, that's three. Your alligator eats the bigger number, which is 12. 
but that's not how we write our answer. We have to write our answer using the fractions. So below your problem, you need to have rewritten two thirds and one sixth. And bring your alligator symbol down because it's eating two thirds. That's your final answer. <clears throat> Course pauses if you need to to finish copying down your warm up. But then the next part of this lesson is uh, we'll actually take notes. So everything I do on my page, you need to copy down into your page. This should have been passed out already. And when you're done, you need to put this into your binder in the notes section. And then you can be on Prodigy for the rest of class. So let's grab our notes. It should say at the top of our page, unit two, lesson four, proper and improper fractions. Now I know you guys don't have um, a highlighter right now. So what I will need you to do is underline what I have highlighted. Now on my page, there's also a little bit extra that's not on your page. You will have to write down what's in these boxes. Ooh, left my pen did not, was not dark like I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Look at it, you see that's kind of like a sparkly. Let me just change colors. Okay, so I have a box here kind of towards the top of my page and I have a box on the side. The what's written in the box needs to be written on your paper. So for right now, let's start with underlining the two sentences that I have highlighted. So for you guys, you need to underline because we don't have highlighters right now. Good. Now, um, on the first sentence where that we highlighted that, or underlined, that says proper fractions are fractions less than one, draw a little arrow and write this sentence. The top number is smaller than the bottom number. If you need to pause, let's do that now. Okay, now let's write the box related to the other sentence, sentence we underlined, or for me it's highlighted, and it says improper fractions are equal to or greater than one. So we need to draw a little arrow coming out to the left and you need to write what's in this box. And this says the top number is either the same or bigger than the bottom number. That's what we're talking about today, proper and improper fractions. Pause the video and get that written down. <clears throat> Okay, now let's actually talk about these. So proper fractions are small fractions. They're not a whole. So it's like less than one whole candy bar. Improper fractions is when you have one whole candy bar or more than one candy bar. This power concept on the right, let's underline what's in there. And so you need to underline all improper fractions are found at one or to the right of one on the number line. Well, to the right of a one means we're getting bigger. So improper fractions are always big. They are bigger than one whole or one whole candy bar. Let's look at our first example. We have to decide which fraction is greater. Now number lines have already been drawn for you, for, excuse me, for you, so we don't have to worry about that right now. But what we are gonna do is look at our two fractions first. We have four over four, and that's being represented by the first number line. Then we have six over five, and that's being represented by the other number line. Let's see, let's label with either a P for proper or I for improper, what kind of fractions we have. So let me look back at my definition. If it's proper, 
the top number is smaller than the bottom. If it's improper, the top number is either the same as the bottom or bigger than the bottom. So let's look here, four over four. Hmm, what I notice is that the top number is the same as the bottom. Well, that falls under improper. So next to four over four, I want you to do a capital I for improper. Now we're gonna go over to six over five and decide what we have. Well, let's look at the top. I have a six compared to five. Well, six is definitely bigger than five. So if the top number is bigger than the bottom, that is also improper. So we have two improper fractions. Okay, well that's kind of hard to figure out which one's bigger then. That's okay, we can do this. So let's use coloring, let's just use our pencils and let's shade in what four over four looks like and shade in the six over five and see which number line got shaded more. So four over four, that means I color in four sections. So using your pencil, let's color in four sections. It's one, two, three, four. We should be stopping here at the yellow dot because, or excuse me, I know it's not yellow. I said yellow, it's actually red on my screen and you don't have a colored copy. So you just, just it's just a dot there, but that's four over four <clears throat> and we stop there. Now let's look at six over five. Well, this means we have to shade six sections. Okay, well, it's already labeled for us. Let's start shading on the second number line. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what I noticed is that I had to go an extra section on my number line. I had to go past the one whole candy bar. So it's like I got one Hershey's bar and then someone gave me a little piece of an extra Hershey's bar that they had. So looking at our the amount that's actually being colored right now, we're just looking at which number line got colored more. And that's the bottom number line because more sections were colored in. So that means six over five is actually our bigger fraction. Well, let's use our alligator symbols to write our answer. Below the number line, I want you to write four over four, leave some space, and write six over five. And of course, please pause the video if you're not ready yet. What we saw with the amount of coloring is that six over five got colored more, so, our alligator eats six over five. And that is your answer. <clears throat> of course, pause the video if needed. Otherwise, turn your page to the back. We're gonna do it again. This time we're gonna decide which fraction's bigger, comparing three over two and seven over eight. Now, we have two number lines, but they're they're not cut, you know, they're not cut into the right pieces. Well, we can we can do this. We can figure this out together. We don't have to cut a number line to know which fraction is bigger. Let's start with <clears throat> 7 over 8 because that's my little blurb here on the right. It says, "What can you conclude about the fraction 7 over 8?" Well, let's first decide if it's proper or improper. Well, that comes from the top to compared to the bottom. The top number is smaller than the bottom. Well, on the front of our page, that meant we have a proper fraction. So underneath this box, I want you to write proper.
So that's one thing I know about seven eighths, that it's proper. But what we, we worked a lot over the last few weeks talking about fractions being small or large. <coughs> Excuse me. When we look at the top compared to the bottom. Well, seven compared to eight, it is small, but it's not really small compared to eight. It's still pretty big. And because it was still pretty big, this would mean that the fraction 7 eighths is also kind of large. And what that means for us is that it's close to 1 or 1 whole. So please copy that down onto your paper. Good. And if it's close to one whole, that means on our number line, we can draw in our own tick mark near the one whole mark. So the number one has an arrow, and we can label this seven eighths. Well, let's see what we can conclude about our other fraction, three over two. Well, let's start with if it's proper or improper. Three over two, let's see, three is bigger than two. And if the top number is bigger than the bottom, we say this is improper. So below that little box, let's write improper. Let's see. So let's decide if this is big or small overall the fraction. Three compared to two, because three is bigger than two, this makes this a big fraction. And not just only a big fraction, this makes this uh, an improper specifically is more than one or more than one whole. And if it's more than one, that means on our number line, we can add our own tick mark after the one and write three over two or three halves. Now, it might help you to visualize this. Let's color in our number line up to our tick marks. So 7 eighths, let's color from 0 all the way to our tick mark 7 eighths, just using your pencil. And let's color our other number line from 0 to the tick mark 3 halves. Good. So visually, we can see which number line got colored more, and that was three over two. And if that got colored in more, more of it got shaded, it means it's bigger. So let's go back to the top of our page. There's an empty spot where an alligator needs to eat three over two. <clears throat> But there's also something really special about what we just did. Imp, we had a proper fraction and an improper fraction. Well, proper is might be close to a one, whereas improper is more than one. So anytime you have a proper compared to improper, the improper is bigger. That sounds like something important we should probably write down on our paper. So let's write a sentence. Let's write at the bottom of our paper. Improper fractions are always
more than, well, let's not write more than, let me erase that. Let's say bigger <clears throat> than proper fractions. That's a really important piece of information that we're going to use tomorrow when we do our independent practice. Because I think it's really important. I'm going to try and draw these stars around it so that it sticks out on my page. Okay, soon as you're done writing that down, you guys need to put this into your notebooks, into the notes section. You can put your binders back on the bookshelf and then you guys are on Prodigy until the end of class. Okay, and make sure you get this written down and I will see you guys later. Bye.